Hello viewers. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to approximate Riemann level fractional integral. Before I start, I would suggest that you must go through the first two parts of lecture number 10, wherein I have derived the left rectangle part rule to approximate the RL fractional integral. And in the second part, I had presented the MATLAB code. So today, once again, we are going to learn how to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral, but this time we will drive another rule called right rectangle product rule. So this RL fractional integral is defined by equation 1 as you can see on the screen. This definition is also known as the left Riemann level fractional integral. So we have equation 1 which is the definition for this RL fractional integral. Now the right rectangle product rule. In order to get this rule, we are given a function f from the domain 0 to b to the set of real numbers. And this is the function whose RL integral is to be determined on this domain. So we have broken this domain into n plus 1 grid points where the initial point x0 is 0 and the final point xn is b as given in the closed interval or the domain of the function. Now when we think of approximation of a function by a piecewise interpolation technique then the very simple function comes, in, comes into our mind is the piecewise constant function. So you can see that the function is now approximated by f of xj plus 1 while xj plus 1 is the right end point of the interval. So in equation 2 we are showing that x belongs to this interval. Once again this right end point is considered. Now in Riemann level fractional integral that was given in equation 1 you have to replace x by xj plus 1 and if you do so you will get equation number 3. Equation number 3 you have the interval of integration from 0 to xj plus 1 so I have broken it from 0 to x1 this is our first integral x1 to x2 second integral and then you can keep continue in this way and after that I have used the summation notation and we will get equation number 4. Now here you can note down the in summation notation the index starts from 1 to j and if you look at the derivation for the left rectangle product rule then you will feel the difference over there we had k starting from 0 to j minus 1. So this is a slight difference between these two rules. After that as I said that on E sub interval the function is being approximated by a constant. So once again I have written that the function is being approximated by a constant which is f of x k plus 1. So I have substituted this f of x k plus 1 in the previous equation where we had used the summation. So that equation reduces to equation number 5. In equation number 5, I have taken this f function outside of the integral and then we have equation number 6. Integrating using simple power rule, you will obtain equation number 7. After that, simple, simple and little uh, simplification using the fundamental rule of calculus, you will get equation number 8 and some more simplifications will yield equation number 9 where you can see that I have used the, one of the properties of the gamma function. After that, I have tried to write the previous equation 9 in terms of equation number 10 and 11 wherein this in equation number 10, AJK is known as the weight of the weights in the formula and they are independent of n but they do depend on the order alpha of the fractional integral. So equation 10 and 11 together is actually equation number 9 that you had seen in the previous slide. So whenever we are given the equally spaced data we can take xj is equal to j plus 1 times h while this constant step size h 
is now equal to b upon n. So here you have to note down that we are taking this h is equal to b upon n while b is the length of the interval. So if I put this into equation number 11, then equation number 11 can be reduced to equation number 12. You can see here in equation number 11, this xj plus 1 is now equal to is now equal to here j plus 1 times h. And similarly, you can write down rest of the terms in equation 11 to obtain equation number 12. So equation number 12 is further simplified and you can see some terms are going to be cancelled and here h power alpha can be taken common and you can take it completely common and you will obtain equation number 13. Now here these weights, they don't depend on j and k. Once again, they do not depend on j and k individually, but they depend on the difference j minus k is it was happening in the left rectangle product rule. What does it mean? It means that they preserve the convolution structure that was actually present in the kernel of the Riemann level integral operator. And this kind of feature can be used to reduce the memory requirements and the computational cost. So this is a very important sentence. While making the numerical schemes, this sentence has a huge importance. So finally, equation 13, if we combine it with either equation 11 or 12, we will obtain what we call right product rectangle rule as now given by equation 14 and 15. So this is how we can drive the right rectangle product rule. Note down that if you replace, if you replace alpha by 1, then we will be back to the classical right product rectangle rule that we have already learned in our undergraduate classes in the subject of numerical analysis or numerical methods. Finally, I have written this rule in one line as you can see on the screen. This is what we call the right product rectangle rule and this rule is used to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral. Now let me also tell you that in my upcoming lecture, in the fourth part of lecture number 10, I will show you how to design MATLAB code for this right product rectangle rule to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral. I hope that you understood this step-by-step -step derivation. Your questions are welcomed in the comment box. Finally, I would request you to like, share, and to subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.